Hi everybody, uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about Antarctica University and a project that I've been working on for a few years. Uh, it's a pretty fun project. Um, it's kind of a fictitious university at this point, um, but we're trying to work on it and I've just been working on it uh, for the past uh, year or more, um, trying to think about uh, what it means to have a university uh, essentially on a continent uh, that doesn't really have any uh, government, formal government, uh, like we know, uh, you know, in the United States or most of the world. Um, and also it's extremely very cold environment um, and some other things. So I'm going to be playing some cool music in the background, some kind of like spacey music. Um, but in general, this is about Antarctica University here. Um, and, uh, you know, we're trying to look at where it would be. So basically what I really thought about was that, um, you know, Antarctica is just too cold uh, to really do anything uh, on. Um, so really the university has to be off of Antarctica. Um, but where would it be uh, and how would it relate to the rest of the world uh, is super important. So I'm going to load up some things here, um, try to get some maps going and some other things. It's going to kind of take a little bit, um, but uh, we'll try to see what we got here. So one of the first things you might notice about Antarctica, um, if I load up the map here correctly, it's still loading, sorry about this, um, but it's going to take a little time. Um, so it's kind of showing up here as, you know, on the South Pole. Uh, let me turn off the weather map because it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Um, but now you have just the uh, fault, fault lines. So the interesting thing about this whole thing with Antarctica um, is there's a plate, there's like a kind of a plate that all is Antarctica and that is the main thing and then there's a couple of weird areas connected to that which is this this kind of area here uh, which is very similar to uh, the Caribbean actually has a circular loop like that as well um, but there's certainly a lot of uh, volcanic activity uh, and a lot of things going on so um, right now there is quite a lot of bases primarily in the tail of Antarctica um, and then there's also one right at the very south pole uh, right here uh, at the south pole so you might be a little surprised. Um, this document is a public open document, so pretty much anyone can edit it. Um, and I have a PDF format that I also worked on here, but I wanna show you, uh, I'm gonna add something right now live to this. So the Wikipedia page is pretty helpful, um, and this kind of gives you some of the best information for all of Antarctica you can kind of see. Um, but basically because it's warmer uh, on the peninsula, the, there's a lot of bases right in here. Um, and it's really hard to see um, where these bases are, but each country has like different uh, places in the, this whole uh, sphere. So the weird thing about Antarctica is that you'll notice that uh, basically it's a lot of ice um, and then basically on the tail here is where you have a lot of that activity. So there's a couple ways to get to Antarctica. Uh, one of the first things that I found out, one of the first people that I ever met in my town that went to Antarctica was actually from New Zealand um, and they flew out of New Zealand. So they this was during the COVID and they had to wait like a couple weeks uh, to kind of get uh, training and some other things in New Zealand. So New Zealand is over here. Um, I'll try to zoom in here so you can see. Um, but essentially they flew here and then from here they flew to Antarctica. So you can see there's a couple bases here. Each one of these are ports. So there's not a whole lot of activity on some of these here. You can see Tugs and Specials. So you can see um, that's like an Australian seaport. Um, and then you got some other bases here, um, even further in that they call seaports. But uh, basically most, if not all of the major traffic to Antarctica is through here, as you can see on this map, there's basically some ideas right in here uh, as well. But basically on the tail is where you see it. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see where some of these bases are. Um, and basically there has to be a seaport of some sort. And sorry, it's loading so slowly, um, but you can see um, there's kind of a lot of traffic in here. There's one base in here and then some other activity down in here. So not a whole lot actually at all. So basically it's one of their most remote places on the planet. Um, if there was any Antarctica University actually on Antarctica, it would probably 
probably be one of these bases on the tip here just because of weather conditions um, and it's nice to be right on the ocean and the waterfront uh, as well so that was definitely a concerning factor when choosing where to choose Antarctica University but really what I decided was that Antarctica looks like a brain um, and no matter where you look at it um, however you turn this map around um, it basically kind of looks like a brain you got the top of the brain here uh, and it's basically like a cross section of the brain um, so what we did is we looked at uh, even warmer areas next to Antarctica right um, it's possible there could be some stuff in Tasmania here we talked about New Zealand uh, and then we even talked about the tip of South Africa as a potential place and then even some other places but there's actually this point right here which we're going to talk about in just a moment as being the capital of Antarctica so how did we get that being the capital off Antarctica so that's a whole different discussion um, that we should probably have but you can see this plate this is all this whole plate is Antarctica um, basically and then that would be definitely part of it so it's a definite different little island here and you, and you can see as I zoom in there's definitely some earthquakes going on here and a whole lot of other stuff going on so and this might be the futuristic uh, capital of Antarctica so that's a very interesting concept to think about um, because some of these islands are not really uh, what you think at all but basically for the university what we chose um, is is actually this island right here this is a uh, english island uh, and it's also run by argentina uh, but it's called the falkland islands the reason for that is it got two halves for the brain so there's like left half or right half and that maybe actually be switched this may be right and this may be left or this may be left and this may be right not really sure on that at all so but basically because there's two halves on this island this made a lot of sense uh thinking about that um, as well as the temperatures being fairly cold down there as well um to mimic what's going on in antarctica so we basically chose this whole region here this whole fault region in here for the antarctica university so you can kind of get your training uh in even argentina which is down in here in patagonia um and we actually looked at all that uh for the whole case here so i'm going to go through the pdf document just because it's a little bit bigger um, but you're going to start to see so the capital of antarctica which we just talked about was right up here that was that mysterious island there's definitely some information there um, and you can kind of see um, there's just so much information here so where would antarctica university be so you can kind of see here's off the tape of argentina so we're basically looking at uh, a start of patagonia to really get your training you may want to go in chile and get a lot of that training right in here because this is so much warmer than antarctica and it actually can give you some of the same coldness areas because it's got a lot of high altitude stuff and mountains um, and there are actually quite a lot of mountains on antarctica as well so um, but they're actually all black um, dirt uh, from volcanic activity uh, primarily so but here you can see the falkland islands so you may want to actually think so we thought about doing freshman and sophomore and junior so basically the undergraduate curriculum would all be in southern patagonia and primarily these three regions there's a lake some very beautiful lakes uh some fun things uh, to do right there so here you can start to see some of the zoom in uh, what you might expect uh, to see these beautiful kind of glacier lakes uh, that are uninhabited and starting to work with what's what we call the anarchy university um, and then there's a lot of Falkland Islands here, some immigration and some details. If you actually want to visit them, you can contact these. This is addresses you can look up. Uh, I'll just zoom in on this really quick so you can see where this is on a map. And we'll zoom in and you'll see where this is. So it's so basically this is the Stanley area. And it's zooming in here and it's going to show you the town. So, so this town is pretty much the main town on the whole entire island of the Falkland Islands. There is, it's very desolate, not a whole lot going on here, um, but you can see it kind of looks, resembles two halves to a brain. Um, and you can see what we were looking at Argentina over here before earlier. And Urshur way down in here uh, is primarily the main port, seaport. So if you're going by boat to Antarctica, that's all out of here primarily. But there's also a, a lot of fishing going on in here. But I'll look at Stanley carefully so you can see what the town might look like for actually the main university. Now there is quite a lot of stuff going on here. There's an airport you can see here on the island and a cape uh kind of a mysterious uh area and then a kind of a harbor in here but there's not a whole lot of people living here uh, on this island 
they, you do see an elementary school or element school, like they call it, uh, and some other things. But there's basically, you know, only a few thousand people living on this island, and, and that's it, really. So, and there, these roads do go quite extensively through here. But there was a major war between Argentina uh, and the United Kingdom, so it's really is still a debate. Um, who should administrate this, but it's basically administrated by uh, the United Kingdom, at least in Stanley, that area. Um, but there is definitely some other areas. Uh, the half of this island over here has some other areas. But if you zoom in, there's really nothing going on here. Let's just zoom in to Port Stevens so you can see this here. There might be like one house or something like that or a few houses. So you see that this is a port here. Um, but essentially, it's a fairly flat island um, with not a whole lot going on here. And I can even see if there's any Google Street View. I think there is some Street View on this. Let's see if we can get this dragged to the Street View. Uh, maybe not. So that's about that's about how it looks. You see some of the stars in the background there. I'll exit the ground view and zoom out. Whoa, sorry. I'm going to pause this for a second. So really, there's very, very few people interested in this at all. So you really have to go to Patagonia. So really, um, we're actually thinking this is quite a different option over here in the Falcon Islands. Uh, and there's basically nobody. It's extremely dangerous out in these waters. Um, but there is some fishing boats and some other things, as you'll see, um, kind of checking out some of these areas. So you can see there's quite a lot of fishing going on here um, and uh, some other kind of ideas happening. But that is all from the Falcon Islands, as you can see here, kind of also from Stanley. Uh, but I'll zoom in here. You can see this fish, fishing ships kind of coming on all over this way. But Stanley being a fairly busy port uh, and some of the other ports you can see, it kind of helps you see what's going on, relatively speaking. But basically Stanley and then up in here quite a bit. And then there's some seaports. And you can look into the port here where the Stanley kind of shows you there's a couple different options um, to dock there in Stanley. Uh, but basically um, it shows you a couple just a couple f fishing boats and some cargo boats um, but you can look up some of these names and it would be possible to work with some of these guys because it's not really a structured university yet so you'd probably have to work with one of these boating companies uh, in Stanley and you could just look at them up right here this guy here and you can see his ship and you can find out some details so it's a little harbor master probably boat or something like that um, so you might want to try to work with the harbor masters there So that, again, those are the emails that you might need with customs for the Falkland Islands out of FK. And this is what it looks like on the ground. So you can kind of see what the port looks like on the Falkland Islands, what you might expect to see. Now, there is quite a lot of asteroid activity down in here. There was one big one right in here, but this is showing most of that is actually in North America. But I just want to look at asteroid activity as well as earthquake activity. Here you can kind of see the weather. It does get very, very cold, but you can see it's primarily the same kind of weather here on the south part as well as here in Falkland Islands. You see the weather pattern is pretty same, but this is a huge amount of earthquakes going on out there. Uh, it's one of the most active regions in the entire planet. Um, so it's important to think about that. So um, I've been trying to get different friends involved. Here's some friends um, or friends of friends involved. Um, but you can see um, kind of the temperatures of Falkland, Island, Falkland. So we looked at this map here, but basically you can see Falkland Islands is primarily actually not too bad, right? Daily mean is actually 35 degrees at most cold. So it doesn't get too bad. And actually, I don't mind 40, 50 degrees weather uh, year round is not so bad. But it does get below freezing sometimes here. So you can see 30 degrees and so on negative. Uh, this is Celsius on this line. So not too bad um, in terms of temperatures, uh, which is pretty nice to think about when you're studying. Um, but it still gets pretty cold. And that's why you don't see a whole lot of ice here. Here's some more of the port. You kind of see the st study of the Stanley area. And then kind of the street views, some of the major streets coming ahead and out here. There was kind of a major conflict here, so it's still pretty spicy in terms of things. But um, this is a Wikipedia map, and you can, I'll load this up real quick just so you can see that. And this will show you kind of the, the, the major areas <clears throat> and some details if you want to look into that kind of thing. It looks like they got the port here. It looks like even Russians. Um, I don't know. There's some kind of Russian village over here. I mean, this looks kind of interesting, so I'm not sure what this means in Russian, but I didn't know that they had their own little kind of area. 
So again, this is a really helpful map, <clears throat> primarily for seeing certain uh, kind of vector graphics and details. So you can see uh, they got a Stanley Glass gas station here and just different details that, that may not show up on a regular Google map that you can kind of click on and see. Um, I, sometimes they show links, they show some additional details. Brother's calling me, hold on a second. So yeah, I was just helping working on some things today, but um, it's really important to see what's going on with Stanley particularly, um, and then the Falkland Islands. You can see here um, kind of another map of what it might look like. And again, this is one of my favorite images of Antarctica. It's super detailed. You can actually zoom in and get pretty detailed. So it gives you like really detailed so you can see everything. But on the on the south, let's just see. Let's look at how detailed we can see on the poles. So you can't really see on the tail much of the stuff going on. But um, Google gives you a pretty good view as well. So on the Google map, unfortunately, they don't let you see the exact pole for some reason. You can spin around on the pole. Um, but you can get pretty detailed in here on this, and it gives you pretty good, accurate ideas of what's going on. Uh, and I think you can even do this, yeah, so you can see the whole tail of Antarctica. And basically, right in here, it starts to show some things, and you can get some details. I think it shows some towns. Uh, I don't know. Very desolate. Not too much going on. But any anyway, that's why you might want to use the marine traffic map instead. And then that can kind of see, I think that got pretty good detail here on this. So here you can see there's actually quite a lot going on right in here. And you can see that it names the bases too here. So this base looks pretty active, at least for the uh, port here. Ah, not really. Okay, but you can't really see it too detailed, but you can probably zoom in on the other map and then just find it where it is. Street view also is pretty good, so you can kind of see on the street view. So if I wanted to go to here, you can see what it looks like really detailed into the thing. So it looks like some pretty interesting rock here along the coast. You see some people working, some other things. But it's not actually the base, which is unfortunate. And actually, most of the street view, you can see the shots right in here. It looks like maybe we can get a base shot here. Let's see if we can get, yeah, so you can kind of see some things going on there's like a little bit just a tiny bit of stuff so you can see some of the yeah this maybe is argentina but uh but you kind of you can see this not totally covered in snow but there's a lot of ice breaking out there some cool stuff going on and here you can see one of the larger um, observation hill this is probably a bigger project of all the ones going on in antarctica and here you can see where that's located. It's basically located right in this vicinity. Satellite views and different kinds of project work. So, and you better be prepared for very cold temperatures. You can see almost everything is below <laughs> freezing all year round. And in the, even in the cold times, it gets up to negative 20 degrees is pretty common for a day, mean and daily mean. The South Pole Telescope is one super interesting to look at too that you might not be familiar with. That's at the exact South Pole, so like right there. doesn't really show it there, but you can see and you can look. They got a coordinate view, and then you can go to Google Earth Maps Satellite View and then see the satellite perspective of this. Hopefully it'll load up in just a second. So in general, there really isn't a lot of photography done down there yet, um, but you can see there's kind of different spots. Um, <laughs> where there is some photos, but it's not really street view yet. So again, this is really important to understand the plate <clears throat> that we're basically talking about. <clears throat> and so if you really want to get the street view, you're going to have to actually do stuff along in Patagonia. And this kind of region here is probably the only way to really get images that are anywhere close to what you might see. So the main station that a lot of people would say that is probably Antarctica University is this Edmusen South Pole Station. And the only way to get here really is it government related or, um, you know, it's basically directly with Antarctica. So a lot of people do work here, uh, live here even year round. So, but it's extremely cold. You can see here's the South Pole, geographic South Pole. And they have this funny little pipe here um, also kind of showing the South Pole. Um, but uh, in general, it's pretty interesting kind of base. Kind of see some 
a lot of work being done here kind of the shape of it um, and some different things control station but again i was shocked to see how cold this is here so we're talking the average temperatures are in the negative 40s negative 70s so this is like very 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 freaking cold it's hard to appreciate how cold this is so i was just like i was like almost like trying to think about the actual idea of like what you'd want to do for a university here in this temperature there's really nothing to prepare so for this so going back to the design of the Falkland Islands is that really the temperature is so much better here that it's really better to study here on the Falkland Islands than it would be ever to study on Antarctica just because it's really difficult there. So you really want to study someplace like this. Um, and you can see there's kind of a central region here that I highlighted. And then there's a kind of a weird even a split almost between these two islands, which is uh, Goose's Green. Uh, kind of like a pathway in between there. So it's almost three islands, but really two major ones if you look at it there Here's some s scenes that you might see from there. They actually got penguins there on this island um, There's actually a lot of penguins all over. Here's what those, the Falkland Islands uh, looks like where you can see the housing um, And some more weird little islands all in between so this is the this is the middle section of the Falkland Islands You can see there and then some more pictures um, what it looks like they got horses on the island and this is the main house this is where the uh admiral is this is kind of their main uh main building that was built first and then some beach scenes uh there's a big anchor along the coast here and then more the anchor, more the little i thought this picture was so awesome to see the little penguins hanging out here there's definitely different types of penguins. Now here's Ursher Shoreway. Now this is Argentina, so basically you can kind of see what it looks like from the from the ground here. You can kind of see, and there's also some a lot of grass and forest as well, um, because it's kind of located on the mainland. And then here's a boat maybe heading out into the ocean on the Falkland Islands, and you can see more of what it might look like um, on the. Excuse me, this is not Falkland. This is Ursher Way, Argentina. So you can see. Um, this is a cruise ship heading out to the Falkland Islands. So you go to the Falkland Islands from this place. And more scenes of what you see, a lot of birds, penguins, and fish. So um, now here's one of the kind of uh, war scenes that happened. Um, you can kind of see what happened uh, on this Falkland Island. Goose Green area was a major point of friction. So you might want to stay away from some of these. Now here is the whole tale of the Antarctica uh, called Hope Bay, um, which is really the main areas that you really need to know about um, if you're starting to get involved in Antarctica. And you can see here some pictures of what it might look like as well. So there is different institutes already going on. This is one called the Uruguay Uruguayan Institute. Um, and th this is what it looks like out here. So there are quite a number of places outside of Antarctica and then there's kind of some dividing up that's been going on um, I wouldn't really uh, you know this is kind of one perspective of how these are all claims not necessarily uh, actual ownership of the island and a really interesting uh, kind of a church here on the Falkland Islands you might want to look at um, and some other areas so there are some other areas this is uh, the Goose Green Museum this is that one little area but separates those two areas which looked pretty interesting so there's some other kind of other coastal ridge cottages and some other areas um, that you can check out so the other interesting idea is to think about how you can have some discussions and things in Europe I'd really like to see that happen in Denmark area um, and actually Amsterdam if there are going to be like side meetings for Antarctica University in Europe it would be interesting to have um, and then you can kind of see some more areas here um, and this is a very interesting kind of like look of what some futuristic buildings might look like on Antarctica or even for the university um, some coloring systems and then really what you want to think about is this declination field line so there is an interesting point that this goes right through the Falkland Islands so the Electromagnetic field will actually work correctly right on the Falkland Islands, so your compass will work correctly over there. So that's another very interesting point uh, to think about um, that uh, 
in terms of where you're academically are located. So right up in here, um, down in Louisiana, and here is they have a very famous chess tournament going on over here called uh, the uh, during the, in the Strait here. Um, and then there's also Nigeria here, and then this is East Africa, and then Mumbai, India, and then this is right near Mount Everest up in Nepal, and then this is Singapore down in here. So there's some other areas that have some interesting electromagnetic fields that would be important to look at and then these are those islands that i was talking about you really want to watch out carefully these ones there's some really interesting earthquakes going on out in this region so um in terms of the schooling you know it's actually surprising that we don't actually do enough work over in these islands here but they're very volcanic and extremely dangerous so there's some really important questions there and you see the fault line kind of does a weird thing here there's already major ESO European Southern Observatory down here in Anaconda um, and that's many billion dollar project and it would be important to collaborate with them um, potentially on some projects work um, if you're interested in working with Anarchy University definitely highly recommend ESO Here's some people that not not necessarily this is my brother here and we're basically just trying to get a whole list of people that might be interested so some of this might be out of date um, and different people but basically this was we were looking at doing uh, external programs at different universities for example up in um, sorry there's a lot of information here but uh, basically working with um, different places around the world including university of south pacific in fiji and some other areas now here is some other areas that are kind of related to the project and here is even on the north pole looking at the aleutian islands and how that might be related to antarctica university potentially in the future and then here's the four some really interesting islands on the north pole now these actually have traffic to them some quite often, uh, particularly on this island right here. Um, and this is mainly part of Russia up here, so these are even harder to get to, but these are kind of a public, almost a, it's almost like a public space where anyone can be a member of this uh, community. Um, but it's interesting to think about. Um, and then here you can see some Antarctica pictures. So I kind of looked at the globe here and you can kind of see what's going on with this tail. You can see it actually comes right into here, which is Uruguay. And then this is Falkland Islands right here, which it goes right through that line. So you can see here, it's, again, it goes right through Falkland Islands. Kind of a zoom in here of that. And then you have some other perspectives on the other side. Now, here's the New Zealand side. So you can see this kind of comes on here. That's how New Zealand may potentially be related to that. And it's actually this side of the island, which most people live in Auckland, which is on this side of the island here. There's actually two islands, major islands here, which would be very important. And then Tasmania that points to the magnetic pole, magnetic south pole. So there's also Tasmania that you should definitely look into uh, if you're looking at Antarctica University. And some other ideas. So I'm just going through some maps here. And again, here you can see this fault line coming through here. Um, and then basically it's fairly stable here. There's not a whole lot of earthquakes you can see. Um, but let's look at that really quick. Just so a quick perspective, there is a lot of year-round ones. You'll see Argentina, Chile, China, India, Russia, South Korea, and the United States um, having quite a number of different research facilities. And then there's a whole bunch of them just for the summer only. So you can go through all of these and kind of see what they all look like different places around Antarctica and I'll just show a couple of pictures here to see so you can see what they all look like and there's different pictures but again a lot of these are actually on the tail or different locations um, and you can see here there's definitely differences in the stations and some of them are quite small some of them are quite large look at that one that was pretty large there Italy, Germany, Norway. And it's a lot of work getting these things here. So you can see United Kingdom has a cool one. I really like this one a lot. India has theirs. And Russia working down the South Pole. And perhaps the biggest one, one of the biggest ones is this one on the Missouri South Pole. And Brazil has one here. It looks like a pretty large one. China, New Zealand. 
very interesting one right on this uh, South African one. And a whole bunch of others. I won't go through all these, but you can just see some basic pictures. To find this, you have to scroll to the bottom, and then you can go, you'll see these little things. It says research stations, show, and then close. You want to see some closed ones as well. And they do this on many pages. This is just the Anderson South Pole Station, and you can see Antarctica has a whole bunch of topics here that you can see. But particularly related to that, and then polar exploration, Arctic, Antarctic. I'm actually wanting to do a whole separate thing on the North Pole, but that's going to be basically about Tasmania, um, even though that's pointing to the South Pole, but we're going to look at that um, as a potential location for uh, getting prepared uh, for some stuff on the North Pole. It's kind of interesting, there's actually been more work on the North Pole than there is on the South Pole in general. And then there's some specially managed areas that you can see. But basically the South Pole is primarily controlled by the United States. And it needs a lot of help. We need a lot of other people helping out with the South Pole. So in terms of specific control, one thing that you should realize is that Argentina actually and Chile have a huge say because they control a lot of the tail here of Antarctica. Whereas other parts of the world, they like Australia claims a huge portion right here Norway actually does quite a lot as well um, but um, you know there's just a lot of the United Kingdom is trying to do the tail as well um, so there's just quite a little bit of a debate here and then on this jaw portion New Zealand wants to look at that as well so here you can see the largest station is actually this Majuro station I'm gonna do a little bit of more detail on that later and then one of the largest cruise ships here is the Silver Cloud just take a quick look at that you can see what it looks like so you can see some different pictures of some cruise ships that go to Antarctica. Looks like they did a paint job on the ship at one point to make it all white, but quite a large ship. So the interesting thing about this um, McMurdo station is that it has about 1,500 people on it, so it's a huge base. One other interesting point is that there's actually a nuclear reactor here um, and it's actually uh, done by the U.S. Army and they dropped it off in 1962. Here's a plaque showing that. So we're going to take a quick look at the McDuro Mc, sorry I'm not pronouncing it correctly but the station. So basically there's a lot of broken up ice here. You can see that it kind of shows uh, quite a bit of these uh, breaking up ice. So um, but basically the station here and you can see in the background there's a huge mountain in the background um, but basically this is it right here and there's 1,000 almost 2,000 people live here um, and there's a year-round base as well and there's also Scott Road here I don't know if we can get an actual and Google Earth you can also see it here and it actually shows you quite a lot of ice so there should be you know this is pretty pretty packed in here I don't know how you're gonna get in here it says unless it's the summertime um, but on a boat um, but um, it is kind of an interesting spot um, to uh, be and it looks like they got um, they may even have street view in some of these areas. yeah they do so that's pretty nice to see um, I'm gonna just go right in here on the street view I've never done this before I'm, I'm, we'll just see what it looks like so you can see pretty much walk down these ways almost looks like it's pretty warm here right um, but uh, actually it's usually about negative 10 degrees or so at least from what I saw on the uh, data here so you can see the temperature um, where are we at Antarctica so so I just went here to this station here and then I grabbed the, the coordinates here to get it to actually get the coordinates on it so where exactly is this I'm gonna zoom out and it's gonna radically change the image so you can see there is probably ocean access here. You can see Scott's hut. Um, so there's quite a lot of weird, uh, weird things that start to happen as we zoom out. Ross Island, you can see, and um, then it zooms out. So this is not the part of Antarctica that's the tail, but um, a lot of people do originally go to the tail. Um, and then this is kind of the, the mouth portion, so you can start to see what we're talking about right here. So, and this is actually on the New Zealand side so you can see over here this is New Zealand here and then they probably came down through here so basically um, there is some earthquakes even showing up over there and some other things um, but it's actually quite pretty far inland and you can see 
eternal so it really requires all this ice to be broken up just to get there so that's why a lot of people actually really do go to the tail over on the opposite side over here and it's actually quite a bit warmer as well so collaborating with other countries um again we saw that new zealand is pretty vital south africa is very vital and basically chile and argentina are huge so spanish is actually quite um close to uh, what might happen as well as uh, English being very popular just because so much U United States influence. But China is actually working a lot on the new International Space Station. And they're working on, on this island called Yunnan Island. So there's a lot of new stuff going on, uh, particularly with China and then also Taiwan here. Even though it gets very warm, <laughs> so it's kind of a totally different concept. Uh, but these islands actually are interesting because there may be some relationships, spiritual relationships, with other places on, on, uh, on, in, in, uh, Antarctica, in or around near Antarctica. So basically that has to do with how the North Pole and the South Pole are related. And here you can see a very detailed map of basically the Patagonia region. And you can see there's a lot of islands and it really does resemble the tail of, this is actually the Strait of Magellan right here. So you can see right through here, there is a kind of a secret little passageway to get through and then Urashurway is even further south of this so you can see down in this area this is Urashurway right here so there's the Strait of Magellan uh Strait of Magellan is right through here but then actually there's a whole another right a separate portion down here there's is the Drake Passage this is actually very dangerous seas you get 40 foot waves 30 foot waves pretty common 20 foot waves certainly um and that's a huge wave uh, to look at um but let's see i can even maybe even try to load up this image here oops external unable to load the external link but i can try to do that in a second so if you're interested in antarctica you should definitely know about this town called Ar Ursherway, argentina and you can see it's a very pretty town you can see some images here what it looks like um it's basically the poor major it's the major port like if you look at if you look at standard tourist guides to how to get to Antarctica, you're pretty much talking about or sure or sure way in this place. If I'm not pronouncing it correctly, please forgive me. Um, but there's a whole lot of really cool stuff going on right here. And this is the town right in here. So you can zoom out and I'll show you kind of, they got an airport there, it looks like. I think this is a major international airport. You can see it's a very big air, air strip landing. So you can get right into the town pretty easily there. Um, and then you can see the pole tip. So this basically is the last point that you get just on Argentina and you can see this whole thing is kind of an island so it's actually very difficult to get to in general um, but uh, you know it's kind of uh, the last major city um, right before you get out into Antarctica um, and then also to the Falkland Islands so you can see the Falkland Islands here so but I highly recommend this city to look at um, in detail if you're interested in Antarctica University. I'm going to go through a couple more interesting perspectives of this thing you can see just a lot of details here. And then here's that plate. You can see how the plate and this Ursher Urway is down in here. So it's basically part of this whole, whole uh, plate here. And then uh, there's even a separate plate right in here and a separate plate right in here because there's so many earthquakes that it's basically tearing off from the major thing. So you can see here, Bird Island Station. There's another uh, station right there uh, on that. So. Um, and definitely want to stay warm uh, and focus on how to stay warm. Now, the magnetic north pole is actually very interesting to think about. You have a magnetic shift and then magnetic north pole and then the earthquake zones and what's that going on. So, but going back to Earth Sherway, here's some more details. And you can see this is actually in, uh, well, this is actually some cliffs out in on the north, the north pole. But um, and again, how we get to the back to the North Pole from the South Pole, you also may want to think about this. You see there's this kind of like boot here where, where New Zealand is kicking something off into the North Pole and that goes into Hawaii and then eventually goes out into the North Pole. So there may be some connections there that are pretty simple to understand. You can see this razor sharp kind of connection up through here, going through here. And um, there's just so many other areas, um, a lot of sled dog racing, might get into that. And they do that mainly in Alaska, um, but you might think about getting yourself a very warm dog. Um, I'm actually thinking of getting a dog pretty soon here, possibly. Um, and um, some kiwis I thought were interesting to look at, different fruits. 
um, and more on the North Pole. So basically there is a lot to study on the North Pole. These are some major areas that you should definitely be aware of if you're studying on the North Pole as well as uh, after you get out of Antarctica University kind of concepts. Um, and then here you can see some very interesting things where there's India is kind of pointing to Antarctica and then you have these two other areas where you have the South Magnetic Pole kind of coming off in the, of uh, Tasmania as well. So we're almost done here. Believe it or not, we've gone through quite a number of pages. I think a few hundred pages of work. So we really talked about the capital of the North Pole. And you see these mysterious islands on the North Pole as well. And then the capital of the North Pole mainly being Tasmania, mysteriously. And why that would be, there's a whole lot of research behind that. And I can discuss that in more detail later. But here you can see these mysterious three islands on the North Pole. And, and maybe these could be linked to other planets. So in the future, these may be the capitals of, say, Mars, Saturn, and uh, who knows, Venus, um, or other planets. We'll maybe have to decide on which order that is at some point in the future uh, for the planet. Um, and then even looking at how we look at a path to other galaxies, you can see that this kind of resembles a galaxy here. Uh, this is Papua New Guinea with Indonesia being half of it and then Papua New Guinea being the other half. And then that, that actually all chases down to Tasmania and then the South Pole, Magnetic South Pole. So there's a lot of other work to be done in terms of understanding what's going on here. But I definitely hope you... Uh, look at it and then there's some different things called gyroscopic poles you can see these kind of regions where you have this pole here this has to do with the magnetic field so these have to do with magnetic field poles um, and different areas so that you definitely need to think about um, if you're also looking at um, gyroscopic axes that I've kind of looked at and some ideas so and then some things called Easter egg poles, which are kind of hidden poles based on earthquakes. And we have a West West Easter egg pole and an East Easter egg pole. And then even something called God's pole, but that's kind of being funny here. But anyway, so, um, and then it also been, there's been some mysterious uh, North Pole and South Pole eclipses. And here's some locations. This is really close to the magnetic North Pole. And I just put that in here. You may actually find some very mysterious education. A lot of people camped out here and on the South Pole or even on the North Pole tried to make it to this exact region. But very, very few people have ever done that kind of stuff because it's extremely dangerous on the North Pole and South Pole just to go see an eclipse. And then there's some other ideas of how the East and West and West and East is connected and even how negative and positive may be switched because the original author that discovered the North Pole and, well, discovered the magnetic magnetic fields on the pole may have actually got that actually swip, swapped because of the charged particles. If you think about it, all this positivity has created an entire continent. So the electron flow is actually going out of the South Pole, whereas it's not necessarily going out of the North Pole. It's actually coming in the electron charges. So it's a little bit different than what you might think um, sometimes on some of these details. And then here's um, some very cool maps that you might want to look at, looking at if, the, if we actually did a map around the South Pole or, the, or entirely around the North Pole. And just so much other. And there's also another project I'm working on called Norm University. It's uh, basically for astrophysicists and some interesting ideas related to that if you're interested. And I even put my, my whole graduation thing upside down because actually everything I've learned about this has been kind of really independent um, from what I studied. I just studied electrical and computer engineering at University of Ill. And it was one of the best universities in the world, actually. Um, there's Chicago's a major city and then the pool is in the millions of people try to apply to uh, University of Illinois. And guess what? I actually got in. But to be honest, there's a lot of other things to learn. So here is the capital of Antarctica, off Antarctica, that we're looking at, and some more details about how that might look in the future. And you can see this is actually a French place. Um, and actually this is related to Africa. So it means that a lot of Antarctica stuff still is related to Africa, believe it or not. Um, even as you notice, South Africa does have a major base on Antarctica. Um, and then this mysterious island, which is kind of, I'm calling an Asian promised land, this may actually become a Chinese island, for instance. So there's really a lot of work to be done because of Taiwan being potentially related to this spiritually and so many other details. So 
If you're interested, here's some more details on the basis. So you can see the activity into some of these spots. And I put, highlighted that in here. And then, of course, we're going back to the Falkland Islands, which is where probably where we want to have the actual university. And some very mysterious cloud coverage is going on to the North Pole. So you can start to see how we have some balance of kind of a blue cloud flow and a pink cloud flow. And then with the tip of this little island, this is off of Russia here. So just so much stuff. There's so many awesome things to talk about. I really hope you enjoyed this topic of Antarctica University and at the end I have a very funny thing there is actually major whales down in Antarctica there's a lot of fish down there we have to be really protective of the thing and I want to remind everybody that we're going deep into some topics here that are very important and only three penguins are allowed per student and I really thought that this would be funny to actually work with the penguins if you are thinking about going to school in at Antarctica University definitely try to get really close with some penguins and work with them and study with them because they know so much they travel thousands and thousands of miles there's penguins in Africa there's penguins in basically Galapagos Islands there's penguins in Australia there's penguins in New Zealand there's not penguins where I live unfortunately except for at zoos but let's not talk about that anyway i hope you really enjoyed this study of antarctica university thank you so much i really hope to talk with you about antarctica university let me know what ideas you have thank you so much